So um, here we are again, another edition of uh, Sales Conversations with Sales Experts. So uh, it's always great to, uh, and by the way, if you want a chance to join me in this seat, then let me know. I'd love to have you, if you're a sales expert of nail uh, your space, your industry, then I'd love to have you in the car with me. Um, what I've got is a guy that I'm absolutely thrilled to have in the car with me today. He's a the founder of an incredible business called Shift to Success. He is uh, a award-winning and leading Amazon best-selling author. Uh, and an incredible guy who's motivated and changing so many lives um, through the program that he has, which helps turn police officers and those from the NHS into entrepreneurs. So without further ado, I'm gonna welcome into the car, Mr. Alexander Siri. How are you, my friend? I'm very well, how are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. So, you've, you've braved my driving then yes, for a little bit. Thanks for having me. Good. Welcome to be, good to be here, right. So, so what the, the plan is, as you may know, from seeing from other editions of this, what we do is we drive around. I'm generally pretty good in my driving, so you can be so. in quite good safe in your safe hands, and we'll just talk through sort of where you are. So, so look, I've introduced you briefly to, to those on the watching the video, but talk a little bit about you, um, your business now, and then we'll start to get into some elements around sales conversations and how you've become so successful in what you do from a business perspective. Sure, yeah. So. Uh well, I'll probably start when I used to work for the police force. So I used to work for Nottinghamshire Police uh, as a special constable, and then um, I moved into custody as a detention officer. And uh, whilst I was there, um, I realised that the dream of becoming a police officer full time wasn't for me anymore. Uh, and I decided to go into business. Um, went into business in 2015. Long story short, I was able to um, grow a multiple six-figure business, I accumulated about 1.5. Uh, million pounds worth of assets with JV finance and uh, I resigned from the job and then um, in 2017 um, out of the job I started to look around uh, my passions and what interested me and I had a lot of police officers at the time asking me how I did things how I built a business and um, I decided then to um, you know, launch a business idea called Shifts to Success, um, and also write a best-selling book called Police Officer to Entrepreneur, which is a business book aimed towards helping police officers build a business in six key steps. Um, and yeah, Shifts Success was founded in 2017. We've, we've grown it pretty um, fast to where it was. Um, and we exclusively, uh, initially exclusively support X and seven police officers, and now we've moved into helping members of the NHS build their own businesses, which is uh, exciting and uh, quite honoured to have you as a sales mentor for the project. Yeah, exactly, and obviously we've known each other for a little while because I've been. It is exactly an honour for me to, to be that sales mentor and, and um, seeing your business grow is has been a real rewarding experience for me. But just talk to me a little bit about what got you into even looking at business. I know you said obviously you were unhappy with the role that you had, but why business? You know, you could have gone and done anything else. You're yeah. a strong man. You could have maybe even been the world's strongest <laughs> man. For it. What, what made you go into business? Sure, yeah. So I, I like to use an it's analogy quite a bit. So if we bake a cake in life and we use, um, you know, the government screwing you over or cancelled rest days or stress from a boss or, or an organisation or it could be not seeing your kids grow up um, and you put that in a mixing bowl, and you stir it up and you put it in the oven long enough, which is the length of service in a job role, then nine times out of 10, you're going to come out with a situation where I could see a lot of my colleagues were going through, which, you know, they were unhappy with their roles. They were stressed, had low income, um, and they just weren't seeing their family as much. And I thought to myself, okay, well, what would be the situation where I use the ingredients of successful entrepreneurs? And um, I thought, okay, what if I had in a bit of you know personal development, mentorship? What if I had a bit in of um, you know hard work, resilience, perseverance? And, and I put that in a bowl, and I put that in the length of uh, in the oven long enough. Um, and I decided to go that route because that would ultimately give me a better future for my life. So um, for me, it was I wanted I wanted freedom. I wanted to live and create things on my terms, not not someone that's been, you know, put there for me by someone else and saying how I can do things in life that I didn't like that. I didn't like being told what to do. And I think society has been drilled down to 
this is the way you should do things and for me it just doesn't resonate with me at all it's a really good point and we had Jason Greystone on the on the uh, the video a couple of weeks ago and you know Jason as I do who talks about is always free and building this financial freedom it is an important factor when you, you know, when you run a business you, no one tells you what to do you decide what you do for yourself and uh, as you know yourself I've been in you know running my own businesses for, for nearly goodness knows what is it 16 17 years now and the thought of having another boss is just doesn't even bear it I wouldn't I couldn't do it yeah so um, it's that freedom but also business is tough though so at the end of the day and we're going to come on and talk about sales in a moment and how sales is drew you know drives every business but business is tough and a lot of people maybe you know see the good things of business but don't see necessarily some of the challenges and downsides yeah and, and you know when you, when that is the case what advice do you give them to to sort of stay strong and stay you know stay with the program yeah it comes down to your reasons why um you know it's one of the questions i always ask the clients to shift success you know what is your reason why for going into business because it's freaking hard work it's one of the hardest things you know i've ever been through um and that's why i love it because it is a challenge but in those in those dark times and in those those times of where you feel like quitting it's all those comes back to your reason why why am I doing this and and for me my reasons why in the property industry was very different to the reasons why I shift success you know shift uh, the property industry it was to achieve financial independence because I didn't want to have a job anymore and now it's to make a bigger impact and change people's lives that's a really interesting point actually yeah uh, you talked about there which is you you know you've obviously made a success a huge success of property and you could have carried on doing that and carried on making lots more money and whatever else but that I know that isn't what drives you. you. You're driven by that impact on lives and the ability to change something. Mm-hmm. And I think it's something that a lot of entrepreneurs don't get right initially, if I'm honest with you. And that because when you're trying to sell and engage with someone, they really people don't. As Simon Sinek said, they don't buy what you do; they buy why you do it. Right. And that aspect is so important. And, and and I think a lot of businesses, not in, in the, the ones that work in the in the cohorts, but a lot of companies in general, just don't have that why they don't have that duvet chuck as, as one of my other clients used to say they don't have that drive to to be something more than just a money making machine and, and I think people see them through that yeah. nowadays so I completely agree so you obviously you know you've we've known um, and we've working together for a while but you know you've had some tips I'm sure from a sales place but what do you think you know how do you encourage your clients to, to focus on sales? What are some of the th- things that you encourage them to do? And what, you know, as well as having that why and that purpose, what are the other things that you think are, are vital for us from us, you know, to be successful at selling? Yeah. So one of the biggest things is, and a lot of people miss it, unfortunately, who, who go into business without the kind of um, the correct knowledge, is just identifying an actual target customer, a person they want to work with, who's got problems. And so many people try and appeal to everyone, and by doing that, they appeal to no one. And as a result, their sales numbers get affected. So if I could give one you know, quick tip, is actually focus on a target customer and their problems. By identifying their problems, you can then start to working on the outcome of where someone wants to be and how they can get from where they are to where they want to be. Um, that would be number one, target customer and their problems, and also understanding them. Um, I think so many people guess what people's problems are instead of actually questioning, probing, understanding, um, and empathizing with them to ultimately, so you build that connection and no like trust with any kind of conversation you have with someone. So yeah, it's probably the key advice I'd, I'd give there. Some good advice, it sounds like you've, you know, you've, you've, you've been, <laughs> but you've never, I'm joking, that's how we've obviously, but you've read a number of books, you've read, you, you know, I know you're a massive book reader and learner of things. You know, the, the route to sales success isn't a complex one, I always say to people. Mm-hmm. It's exactly as you say. It's about be something to someone, yep. be able to solve a problem or a want. And people do have wants as well. They want to aspire to other things. Mm-hmm. And then just focus on getting to know them and understanding them rather than just being able to focus on yourself. Mm-hmm. And so many salespeople, because they want to see the result that they want to get, they feel that that's what they've got to do. They've got to talk, you know, they've, they've pushed on themselves rather than, very best they're able to 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 tune in to to those that they they speak to and to get what they're thinking and to really empathize and it must have been a challenge when you're working with police officers because let's be fair you know as an audience they're a they're a tough audience yeah yes, absolutely so yeah. how have you you know what approaches have you you know how have you used your you know abilities and skills as an entrepreneur to actually you know, convince some of them, some people that you could argue are quite sceptical that, yeah. that because you know, your program isn't, you know, is a, is a great value program, but it's also, it's not, you know, it's not something that's, you know, five pound, ten pound thing, it's, it's, a, it's an investment for them to make. Yeah. So how have you been able to do that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and you're quite right, you know, police are, ex zone police officers are one of the most uh, skeptical audiences and quite rightly so due to the nature of their jobs. Um, and I say to people, you know, if, if police officers can see the value in, you know, going into business and being sold to and see the value, then, you know, you'll be fine uh, in your own business. So, um, going back to the beginning stages when I launched Shift Success, um, I had my brochure, I had my offer form, and I met lots and lots and lots of police officers in hotel lobbies, okay? Um, and what I identified by having that conversation with, with every single one of them is, um, I was able to take away a key piece of information from every no that I got. Every single rejection from price is too high or um, they didn't see the value, it's not for them, they're unconfident. Every objection you could think of, I took that into my next sales um, presentation and um, tweaked and refined my approach and um, understood them and kind of came up with handling the objections before it came to, to uh, fruition. Um, and, and lo and behold, um, it got to a point where actually it was so successful that a police officer said yes. And when that police officer said yes, I used exactly the same, same ingredient in my next sales presentation. And another one said yes. And I think, you know, there's a key point. So many people go into sales and they get so disheartened by the no and don't learn from them. And if I could give any advice, it's just persist, take key points from it and use that in your sale in your next conversation. Um, so yeah, just understanding their pain points is a key one, uh, where they're at, and also asking the question, if you don't solve these problems, how else do you expect these to go? Um, and I think when people realize that, um, and they've been in this you know, situation, this bad environment for years, if they don't make the decision now, it's never gonna get better. Mm. So, um, it, it's, yeah. it's a great point, and, and, and like you say, by, you know, I talk to a lot of people about how sales is about the understanding and getting to know someone. You know, because one of the things is, it's also about risk. You know, a lot of people in life will always take, will look at something and go, "I can't do that because there's a reason I can't." There's always a reason why they can't, rather than the reason that they can. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the challenge is to to get a skeptical group of people to see it. But you know, I always say to people, the objections that you get, most objections happen when you haven't understood the person well enough, or if you have understood them. Mm -hmm you can then go back and reflect back on the conversation you had. So if, so if you've really got to know someone, they've built a relationship where they trust you and they like you, mm -hmm. and they feel like they can talk to you about some of their challenges, and, and they tell you that you know that it's it's breaking their heart to not see their kids every evening or whatever else. Yeah. All right, in sales, we then can go back and say, look, you, you, all right, I know this is an investment for you, but you just told me that it's breaking your heart to, to, to not see your kids. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which, 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 where do we go from here? Yeah. And, and it, I always think the best salespeople help a prospect see it for themselves. Yes. They help a prospect go, I need to do this. I yeah. need to, this isn't going to change yeah. that unless I make a change. And they're, they feel like, the catalyst for it rather than necessarily, and then the spark that lights someone else up yeah. rather than being in a position where they do something that they don't want to do. Yep, yeah, absolutely, completely agree. And it, and it's, it is, you know, it's a very key point that people sometimes go back and say, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do it and, and how I want to do it. But if they, you know, if they don't make those those calls, if they don't deal with those no's, and deal with no is a real interesting thing, isn't it? Because rejection is what worries a lot of people from a sales perspective. I'd rather get a no than, than a maybe. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a key one. Um, yes is great, um, but no is completely fine too. Um, you know, it's for people. We're um, not right for everyone. You're not right for everyone. You're right, and we don't. And we, as a company, we, we don't want to have everyone. We want people who generally want to change their lives in a remarkable way. We want results. We want transformation. Um, and if people don't want that, then we're not the person to force them, uh, those situations upon them. So yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. In terms of, and you know, obviously the the commitment you know you make to sales. I know you um, make a huge commitment to sales on a. Mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Do you think business owners make enough of a commitment to sales and the sales no. kind of drive in, in terms of what they do? Absolutely not. I think so many people get distracted by shiny things in business and generally, um, you know, people people don't like selling but they don't and they don't realise that if you haven't got a business if you don't and they'll neglect and they'll go for marketing, they'll go on video, they'll you know, they'll um, you know go to certain events but when it comes to picking up a phone and and literally bringing business on, for some reason they don't pay as much attention to it as they should. And um, they, that's why I'm busy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, well, yeah. They they try and delegate it, or they try and um, 
just hope it'll come by referrals. That's a, that's a common thing I hear, referrals consistently. And I feel like, you know, if, if that's the whole central um, core element of bringing on business, it, it, it's very, um, it's very nervy, I would say, because if that referee or that person who stops uh, referring clients to you, then your business is gone. It's, it's actually true, true, but the other thing is about around referrals, it's great to have referrals, but I was talking to someone um, the other day about business, I said, if you've got so much business that people, because the other thing I hear a lot is people say, oh, I don't need the business, I'm okay, thanks, I'm all, I'm all good, I, I, I've got everything in place, I, I, I don't need any more business. I'm like, okay, well, that's great, but I said, would you like to increase your prices by 25%? Well, I'd love to, but I can't. Well, the, the drivers of, 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 of sales and of price are supply and demand. Mm. So ultimately, if so many people want to work with you, mm -hmm. okay, and they want your business, and there's only limited spaces or limited capacity, mm -hmm. or you can't scale it up, then you, one of the best ways to increase your prices is to be over, you know, over, oversubscribed, as yeah. it were, as we yeah. both know, so that people say, well, yeah, I do want to be in a position where I can charge extra, and I've got 10 people already in the one business from me, and by the way, if I keep prospecting, and keep engaging I'm gonna find another 10 or 15 people and then suddenly the opportunity yeah. becomes much bigger because people want to work with you know people that are um, already very popular and very good at what they do so your opportunity then to increase the price or to leave and lower the amount of time you know whatever it is it grows because people can see that you're already in demand mm. Um, True, and and I think a lot of business owners just like you say. I hear the same you know things on a regular basis. I'm too busy, or I've got referrals. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, the other thing I say to that as well is, in sales and business, I want to be in con control. And this control is not a f control freak, but it's like saying I don't want to leave my destiny mm -hmm. in someone else's hands. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Because if I leave my destiny in someone else's hands, I a referee, then I'm reliant on them for everything. Yeah. Whereas actually, no, no, I want to put myself in control. See, the way I see it as well is that you know when people say you know I've got enough business things. Flip it and say, you know, have you helped? Have you impacted enough lives? Yeah. And that's the way I see it. For every for every person that we help through shift to success, that's a life we're changing, and the lives that they can change through their business. That's yeah. a that's a domino effect. And when people say they have enough business, I'm like, okay, well, flip it. How, do you feel like you've impacted enough lives? Because mm -hmm. they're always more and more. Yeah. And I think if people focus on that. Um, rather than the actual, you know, the business element of things, I feel like it will be a complete mind shift for them. So you mentioned about scalability in, in your business and how you want to scale and grow to help more entrepreneurs. You know, what's your thoughts on how you're going to make that happen? Yeah, so as we, as you know, the company grows, uh, more ex and some police officers, members of the NHS um, join the cohorts. Um, to increase the scalability, then I will get coaches. Uh, of people who have done very well on the cohort, so top performers as an example, who then are able to um, coach and, and mentor and do the things that I would do typically um, right now um, to leverage my time, which is going to ultimately create scalability. So, um, so yeah, um, top performers on our programs would become coaches um, who would have regular bi-weekly calls with members on the cohorts who are active on the cohorts. Um, and that way, I can be at multiple places at once, so to speak. And I know one of the things that's really important for you when in building Shift to Success has been this tribe and this this group of people that are incredibly happy and successful with the results they've gained. I know that's a big passion of yours. Tell me how you know, because I know there's been some stories where, when you've got disciples, as I call it, that, that so positive about what impact you've had on their lives, they become salespeople for you, don't they? Yeah, it's mad. You know, I it is quite strange that the amount of traction we've built from people who are going out there and spreading the word of Shift Success and the company that they become almost a sales force in the quite in their own right. You know, they're they're sharing you know how the company's changed their lives. You know how they've you know uh, come off antidepressants, how they've made sales, how they've resigned, how they've you know came from making a loss to now you know making a very profitable business. Um, I don't need to do that and that's really helped me and to be honest you know when it comes from the owner of the company um, compared to people who have actually done the program and got the results they you know that's the really the goldest lies from them um, that I found so yeah it's been it's been amazing um, <laughs> from the outside we we all almost look like a cult because um, a lot of people you know joke and seen that many police officers waving their hands in their ear and smiling and stuff and you know we're not incentivizing people to to say that about us it, they just do it because i suppose they, they love love what we do mm, definitely and you know one of the things that 
you know, we have talked about it and about the sales approach here is you have had to sell though. You have had to sell to police officers. Yeah. You have had to um, you know, be able to get people on on your side. What are you know, what are some of the key things that you know that you've learned over the course of the last, you know, number of years since you've been in business mm-hmm. that you think if someone's watching this now that is an entrepreneur that wants the success and the and the dreams of, you know, of being business owner and having everything they want what, what are some of the sales basics that you think that they should look to do on a, on a daily or weekly basis yeah absolutely so obviously prospecting is a key one making sure that you're actually speaking to people creating opportunities um, looking after your uh, your critical performance indicators so the numbers the amount of leads that are coming in which is key um, and how many calls are being made daily um, to see if you can solve people's problems and ultimately um, join join your products or service. So, so that's number one, making sure you're actually doing the work, mm-hmm. um, not just expecting it to you to come to you. Um, and I want to say as well that not everyone's the right fit for you, mm-hmm. and that's okay. You don't need to take over the world. You don't need to take over a whole market. Um, you just need a few people who are right for you, and that will take you where you want to be. So we have a selection criteria at Shift Success. We don't let everyone just join our programs. We and the reason for that is because we would much rather uh, people who engage with us spend their money on a nice holiday or you know I don't know a bigger subscription on Netflix if you can do that. If they're will, if they're not willing to do the work, uh, we want results. We don't want um, you know people who are just gonna you know join a program and expect you know success to fall on their lap. Um, so we quite rightly say, and you know when I'm at my events and at the end of the day I'm speaking to police officers, I say you know. We're not for you if you aren't willing to put in the work. So you don't have to get everyone be the right customers for you. And I think you're going to have a much simpler and ultimately much easier way um, in scaling your business when you know you've got the right customers for you, not not negative people and not people who are just going to sit on their ass, essentially. Yeah, yeah cool. Well, it makes a lot of sense. And, and you're obviously, you know, you're a younger entrepreneur than me, or mind you, everyone's a bit younger than me <laughs> compared to my grey eyes. Talk to people about, you know, one of the things that also I hear a lot from people is that Oh well, I can just put some stuff up on social media, and you know I can sell socially, and uh, and I don't need to go and do sales. I mean, it's interesting that you, as a, you know, someone that's more likely to be more familiar with social media and the different types of social media, are, you know, could have that opinion, but yet, you know, I, as I would say, likes don't pay the mortgage, mm. and the, the reality is, you know that yourself as well, don't you? Even though you can do be good on so, and you're very active on social media. Have a look at Alex's. Um, shift to success community there's huge amounts of members in there but you still yourself say that that's no substitute for, for, for sales activity is it absolutely I mean the way I look at content is that you know it, it's, a, it's a guiding light so you attract people you, people either like your content or they don't like your content the people who like your content that's great they start engaging and stuff but ultimately you've still got to do and pick, pick up the work you've got to you've got to pick up the phone you've got to understand people uh, probe ask questions understand more about their situation where they're at and where they want to be. Um, that's not to say, you know, the odd sale does come through social media, but the reality to scale a business, you have to make the calls. A lot of people, um, you know, like Google as an example, Google's a huge company who have a massive social online presence and know all the key data about there is or what we're doing. Um, but they have teams and teams and teams of salespeople picking up the phone and selling their products. Yep. Now, if Google do that, and that's Google, we should be doing that because we're on a much smaller scale. Yep. So um, Facebook's the same as well. They have exactly the same thing. Exactly right. So um, so yeah, you know, you've got to pick up the phone. Social media is great for attracting people to you and getting the odd one or two sales. But the reality is, to scale a business, you need to pick up the phone, understanding, and also following up. I think that's a key thing. A lot of people they get a no or they get a, this third no or their fourth no, and don't realise that you know the majority of sales actually are, are made on the fifth. Fourth interaction, mm-hmm. um, and having that perseverance to follow through um, is key because people's situations change, right? No, no, not now means doesn't mean no, not never. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. So, and, and social media is one of those things. That's, and any tips for people? That, I mean, I was talking to to you before around TikTok, you know, which is this. If anyone doesn't know, TikTok is this new video tool that's come out. I looked at yourself; it was quite cool actually. But I was looking at creating my own account now. People think it might think, what the hell is TikTok? Is doing about a clock? But how do you keep in contact with that to date on so many of these different media and tools in order to know what's successful, you know, to help you 
promote and sell your business. That's a challenge if you're a business owner like me, a bit older. That's a challenge for people, isn't it? I mean, what do you suggest that they do to yeah. to, to help keep in keep in the loop without also following every new fad? Yeah, to be honest, um, my, if I give any business advice around this, is be on the platforms where your target customer is. I see so many people, uh, for example, going onto TikTok, um, or it could be LinkedIn, or it could be even Facebook, where their target customer's not there. And you're posting content on something where your customers aren't going to see it. And obscurity in business will kill your business. You have to have attention on your business and your brand. And if you're not using the same platforms that your customers are using, then you're invisible. So there's literally no point in being on all the platforms. My advice would go all in on one, maybe two platforms where your target customers are and focus on that, then scale from there. Great advice, and, and and you've obviously you know you see Facebook as one of your platforms. LinkedIn, an area where a lot of businesses again are seeing a lot of traction. Thoughts on LinkedIn from a sales perspective? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, funny enough, a lot of these offices are actually on LinkedIn. So, um, uh, Facebook uh, and LinkedIn uh, and Instagram for myself. Um, and yeah, different platforms have different um, interfaces. So, um, you know, with Facebook, it's all about community. Um, that's why we have a Facebook group. Um, Instagram, it's more about behind the scenes. So I like to show a lot of my, uh, um, I like to call it raw behind the scenes. So I'll be at home in my office, you know, giving some- Or at the gym at four in the morning. You're <laughs> a... Alex is one of these people that's also very early risers. So what time do you get up in the morning normally? I get up at half four every morning. Half four every yeah. morning. There you go, there's yeah. dedication. He yeah. doesn't go to bed till uh, 12 o'clock as well. So you get very, yeah, <laughs> no. you go, you, you're, a, you're, you're an early, uh, early to bed and early riser, aren't you? Yeah, I go to so. bed at about, um, yeah, nine o'clock, something like that. But 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 that's also an indication of you know something else. I was just to fit, as we get towards the end of this session, and that's focused on dedication and driven. I always say to people, you're you are I think one of the most driven, if not the most driven person I've ever met, and you're very determined um, to achieve the goals that you've got for your business. You know what's 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 made you so determined, and 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 how do you? Uh, Know, continue that motivation for, for, for achieving the goals you want to yeah I think I think this has changed over time I think initially um, you know my, my background um, my mother and father um, you know dad left the scene when I was 10 and you know got kicked out of home when I was 21 so I was, you know, I was homeless for a brief period um, so that was initially I kind of burning desire where I wanted to change and you know the, being the didn't want to become a police officer anymore when I went to custody that was one as well um, but I also um, now is that I've got this one life, this one opportunity to do all that I can, to be all that I can, and to have all that I can in in this this remarkable thing we call life. And for me, the biggest the biggest fear that I've got isn't failure, isn't you know the hours I put into my business or anything that goes wrong. It's literally dying with regret, dying knowing that I've not give all it takes to, to make this big impact and change as many people's lives as possible you know whilst I've been here I want to leave the world in a better place I want my legacy to live on knowing that I have helped people and you know the people I've helped they're now helping people so it has this ripple effect this domino effect and for me right now that's the driver um, I don't want to die with you know the fire still on my lips I don't want to die with you know any dreams unfulfilled and you know what if I fail along the way if I stumble across that's fine but at least I know I don't want to ever die wondering what if that's the that's the worst you know thing possible for me wondering what if or you know I wish that's just not the kind of terminology I want to be using on my deathbed and finally you know as we get to the end of the video in terms of what we do I know um, mentoring is something that you do yourself and is really important to you yeah for those people that 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 don't have a mentor or think, why should I even bother looking at having a mentor? What would you say to them? Is, what's it given you? So first of all, yeah, so um, my success in just about every area of my life has come down to mentors. Um, you know, my mentors have mentors, their mentors have mentors. Uh, men mentorship has helped me become the man I am today. Um, I started off knowing nothing about business, nothing about property investing, nothing about sales and um, mentorship has drastically shortened the amount of time uh, you know from going from starting scratch to, to where I want to be right now and where in the future um, so number one it's, it's actually shortened the amount of time uh, and also from an emotional point of view knowing that I don't have to trawl through the internet and find the answer when I can pick up the phone have a conversation with a mentor it's been phenomenal and in fact some of my biggest breakthroughs in life has come from 
deeper, meaningful conversations from mentors that understand what I'm going through because they've been through it. Mm. And there's a great Chinese proverb that says, to know the road ahead is to ask those coming back. Mm. And, and it's true. Why the hell would I try and figure this out myself when I know there's been so many people out there who've already done it? I'm willing to exchange money for that because I understand my time is more valuable mm. than any money. But you've just hit upon the thing, a lot of people don't see their time as being valuable, do they? They don't see the, 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 the investment in and this isn't a pitch for mentoring, by the way, because that's not what I, I do. But it's, it's people don't see that. They see that they're afraid to, to, to spend an investment in something. And yet, you're right. Actually, they will go along the route of doing something for two or three years, losing money or wasting time. Yeah. And yet, if they'd have asked someone the question by paying for that knowledge, they would have got an answer yeah. and they would have been able to be quicker and yeah. faster to do what they want to do. Well, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I, I firmly believe that, you know, follow me on Instagram, I say this quite a lot. One of the reasons why most people are broke today, financially broke, is because they don't spend their money on things that teach them how to produce more money. Instead, they buy on instant gratification things, they'll upgrade their phone, their laptop, they'll go on a holiday. That doesn't change their life. It impacts in a little way, and then it's gone. Whereas something I did at a very early age was I invested 18,000 plus that on a mentor. And ultimately, that shaped my life. And it's produced me, you know, not only freedom but more money i'm able to you know pay, make a bigger impact i'm able to you know leverage my time better and without that um yeah we wouldn't be having this conversation right now exactly so look it's been fantastic to have you in the car right and to talk through things with you about sales and about business and in general about success and so so what you know if you haven't where can people find out about if you haven't read that if you are in the police force or in the in the nhs or fire service or any of these services where can people get hold of you your book is on amazon they can download it yeah. and buy a copy of it can't they or, or i guess here's another thing if anyone sends anyone who's watching the video that's in the police force or um the nhs and thinks i'd love to hear a bit more about alex's story too what i'll do um, i'll get three copies of alex's book um to anyone that comments in the video section below in the section below put your comments in there and uh, send us your details and we'll get three copies of alex's book um sent to the first three people that do that so that they can have yeah, the chance to be definitely. inspired as well and build that better life for themselves in the way that you have yeah yeah absolutely and you can reach out on your shiftsuccess.com I've got a podcast, the Shift Success Podcast, which is a business co podcast. Uh, my book's on Audible as well, if you want to listen to audio books. Um, and of course, you can check us out on our Facebook group, which is a large and growing community. So, so yeah, awesome to meet you. Well, look, well, we're back to where we should be, back to, uh, to home. So um, thank you, Alex, for your time. I really appreciate it today. Thanks, um, it's a real great honor for me to, to have Alex in the car, as I have with other entrepreneurs and uh, business owners and sales experts who have been able to deal with my driving firstly, which has not been too bad, and secondly, share their knowledge and expertise on uh, sales, on business in general, um, with sales being the key focus. So look, if you'd like to sit where Alex is sitting and be my next guest in sales conversations with sales experts, like this man, uh, Alexander Siri, then uh, I'd love to have you in the car. Drop an email to monya at jameswhite.business or alex at jameswhite.business, not this Alex, another one, my Alex, and uh, we'll get you in the car and get you sharing your story as well. But look, thank you, mate. Really appreciate, you, it. appreciate it. Again, put your comments in the section below. Free books, uh, if you're in the NHS, the police, the fire service, uh, any of these, you know, maybe government services yeah, and are feeling frustrated at where you're at and what your future holds um, and you want to build a better future, then, then have a look at what this man's doing. Just have a look at some of the community of people that he's inspiring to build a better life for themselves. And uh, if you, 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 I can't, you, I can't tell you how much he's helping other people. And if you feel that way, I'm sure he can help you as well. So thanks for watching uh, the latest episode of Sales Conversations with Sales Experts with Alexander Siri. And um, on that note, we leave it there. Cheers. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.